praise the name of the Lord. I welcome you all to our midweek service. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall surely uh, rejoice and be glad in it, particularly for the grace that He has bestowed upon our lives. Um, for those of you who are watching us on Facebook and on YouTube, we just want to welcome you uh, for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, many of you who have continued to watch and who have continued to reach out to us, uh, continue writing to us as you have been doing. And indeed, we shall continue uh, coming back to you uh, with the prayer requests as you have. And we pray that God is continue to bless you and is going to show himself up in your lives in a great way. Um, today I want us to look at um, a particular chapter in the Bible <clears throat> and you all agree with me that there are those moments in life when we go through disappointments, when we go through uh, challenges and um, we thank God because as believers we have a manual, we have a word of God that he has given unto us that every time we have a need, every time that we have a question in our lives, that indeed God has got the answers in his, this very word, that the word of God is an answer to every question, <coughs> excuse me, that we have. The Bible says in Romans chapter number 15 and verse 4, that for whatever was written in former days, was written for our instruction that through endurance and through encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. So in this word there is hope. In this word there is hope. So in everything that we might be going through we can always come uh, to the throne of God. We can always come to his word and find hope in him. And I just want us to look at the life of one great man, uh, Isaac, uh, in Genesis chapter number 26, and see what lessons that indeed we can learn uh, in as far as um, um, overcoming our disappointments and overcoming our challenges is concerned. And the, this particular chapter is the only chapter that is actually particularly dedicated to his life. And we see that in the midst of suffering, in the midst of disappointments, that indeed he was able to find hope in God, and in the end he overcame victory. And just before we go to the three lessons uh, that we, I want us to learn today, uh, let's just have a quick, uh, a quick background information of what is happening here. In Genesis chapter number 26, the Bible records in verse 1 that there was a famine in the land. Remember, it, the Bible doesn't say famine in a land. It talks about famine in the land. That means it is a particular land. It's a specific land. It must have been a land that has got a personal dimension in as far as Isaac is concerned. Now, if you look in Genesis chapter number 12 and verse 10, we find that there was famine in the land during the time of Abraham. So it is the same land. And why is it so uh, particular? Why is it so important, this land? Because it is the land that God had promised to Abraham and his descendants. Now, what we see here is like, it's like um, uh, a lipre of what had happened in the time of Abraham. It's a, 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 a lipre. Because if you read Genesis chapter 12 and verse 10, we see that during that time there was famine in the rod, and Abraham found himself on the way to Egypt. And now here we see that there is a famine in the rod, and... Isaac went to Jera, the king of Phiris times, and there is a very good possibility that he was also on the way uh, to Egypt. Now, what we need to understand is that there are some things 
There are some things in life that will happen which happened to our forefathers. There are some things in life that will happen that happened to the people before us. And it is therefore important to understand and to understand who we are in God so that these things, even as they come, how do we handle them? And that is why it is always important as believers to be positive, to speak positive things, that even when negative things and when challenges comes in our lives, that we can understand who are we? Who are we? And as we do that, we will be able to overcome. Now, see what happens in verse 3. See what the Bible says in, 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 in verse 2, actually. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell you. Verse 3 says, Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you, and I will bless you. Now, remember, remember, Isaac is the son of the promise. So in short, what God is saying, you do not have to follow the footsteps of your father. You do not have to go the same route that your father went, uh, went through. Yes, the circumstances may look different, uh, may look the same, but you are different in the sense that you are a son of the promise. And it's good to understand this. It's good to understand, to understand this, that indeed sometimes we will go through the same challenges that people before us went through. But it is how we are going to, um, to protect the word of God. It's how we are going to believe that is going to determine the next level that we are going to. To be so, he t God tells um, Isaac, "Sojourn in this land," and in fact, he continues to repeat the same words that he told Abraham, Abraham in uh, Genesis chapter number twelve. You know that I will bless you, I will multiply you, and in your offspring all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because Abraham obeyed my voice. And kept my charge and my commandments, my statutes and my laws. You see, God is just reminding Isaac the same promise, the same covenant that he had with his father Abraham. And now, what happens? What happens after this? What happens after this? The three things that I want us to learn from the life of Isaac is number one, Isaac relied on the promises of God. He relied on the promises of God. When God reminded him that, he relied on the promises. So what did he do? What did he do? Let's go further down in verse 12. In, 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 in verse 12. And Isaac sowed in that rod and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Now, it's good to understand that we have a promise. We have a promise. God is telling him, you don't have to go to Egypt. You don't have to go through the same challenges that your father went through. And as we have seen, he reminded him of the covenant. And when he reminded him of the covenant, Isaac responded. And I think it's good to understand one thing, that it is not just enough to rely on the promises of God, but it's also important to respond in faith. That is exactly what Isaac did. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29, God is reminding us that we are heirs to the promise. Heirs to the promise. Because the Bible says that if you are Christ then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. And it's important for each one of us to understand this, that we are partakers of the Abrahamic covenant through faith. And God is reminding us the same. You see, the word of God is the one that reminds us who we are. And sometimes it requires God to remind us where we are. Number one, so that we can understand whom he 
is. Number two, we can continuously be conscious of his promises upon our lives. So we don't have to suffer the same shortages that our fathers went through. We don't have to go through the same shortages, the same afflictions, the same lack that our forefathers went through. Why? Because we are sons and heirs of the promise. You see, right now I know there are so many people who are looking at their lives. And I know we had a great uh, year, uh, early this year, when we ushered in year 2020, the double 20 year. And we were all, all looking forward, you know, with a lot of uh, um, optimism uh, uh, as we, 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 we look back such a wonderful, great year. And by the time we get to March, things were starting to get gloomy. And we... Uh, there are people who are, uh, who are looking at their businesses and they're saying that they had great business uh, ideas, but maybe they didn't work out as they uh, expected. But I just want to remind somebody that we are heirs according to the promise. We can still turn things around when we rely on the promises of God. See what happens to Isaac. There was a famine in the rod. But God reminded him on the prom of the promises, and he saw the same ear in the midst of a famine. And the Bible says that he leaped a hundredfold. He leaped a hundredfold. So you can still reap a hundredfold in the midst of a famine. As long as you live on the promises of God, like Isaac did, you are going to reap. Your business will be restored. Your job will be restored. And I just want to encourage somebody that it is not over. It is not over. The fact that when you look around, nothing seems to be working. Isaac may have looked around. You know, he was on his way to Egypt, just like his father did. But God tells him, no, 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 no. You are son of the promise. Let me remind somebody here today that you are a son of of the promise and God can still do that which you think that he cannot do because he is God and he's a God of promise and I know and I believe that he is going to do it now see see what happens in verse 14 the Bible records that Isaac other than getting a hearted fold he had possessions of flock and has of many servants so fear is times envied him. The Philistines envied him. You see, they, they, they started to see him as a threat. They started to see him as a threat. But even when he, uh, even when they, they, they saw him as a threat, Isaac continued to rely on the promises of God because he knows that there is nothing that he cannot do, he can do without God. There is nothing that he cannot, uh, he cannot do without God. And so the second thing that he did, other than relying on the promises of God, he relied on the power of God. He relied on the power of God because there is nothing we can do unless we rely on on the power of God. So by sowing, by sowing, he activated his faith. And what we can see in a great harvest is a manifestation of the power of God. And it is not just enough to rely on the promises of God until when we make ourselves, we put ourselves in a, in a position where we can rely on the power of God, the things of God are not going to manifest. And it's good to understand this, that it is not just enough uh, to sing and declare that, yes, I know whom I am. You know, great words. But until when we learn to rely on the power of God, no matter how much we sing, no matter how much we declare that we know whom we are, it is not until when we learn to rely on the power of God that things in our life will move. Deuteronomy 8.18 says that you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he saw with your fathers at a, as it is in this day. So until, that until we get to that point, when we can rely 
on the promise, on the power of God. Nothing in our lives is going to change. You see, and I know that there are many of us who are looking in, you know, into our lives um, and thinking, you know, I have come to the end of my life. But I just want to tell you that there is hope. There is hope in God when we learn to rely in his power. When we learn to rely in his power. Second Corinthians chapter number 12, um, Paul says, Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. As Paul was writing these words, he was at a point of desperation. He was at a point of desperation. He was telling God, God, remove this thorn away from me. But God tells him, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. That means it doesn't matter what situation you are in. It doesn't matter how weak you might be feeling right now. But as long as I am with you, even in your very weakest point, I, my grace is sufficient for you. Then Paul says, therefore, therefore, I will boast and more greatly, greatly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. He understands that even at his very, 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 very weakest point, as long as God is with him, he is strong. And I just want to speak to somebody that you might be feeling weak. You might be feeling uh, lost. You may, have, you may be looking back, especially in the last few months, the last few weeks, and feeling that everything, that all the plans that I had for a particular business, all the plans that I had for this job, which I may have lost, and you look at yourself and you are wondering, how am I going to move on? How am I going to proceed in the coming months and in the coming weeks? Continue relying on this power because in your weakest point, the power of God is at work. And it's important to understand that David says in one of the uh, most quoted Psalms, Psalm 23, he talks about the Lord being my shepherd. The Lord being my shepherd. But if you go to verse 4, he, say, he talks about... Um, he, he, he demonstrates how he relies on God's presence, on God's presence to give him comfort. Um, and he talks about uh, being in the shadow of the valley of, of death. Now, for there to be a shadow, there has to be a right. And the right that we are talking about here, you may not understand the extent of what is bringing the shadow. You may not even know exactly what it is, but as a believer, there is one thing that you are assured of and which you know of, the right that is Jesus Christ. The Bible records in Genesis chapter number one that in the beginning, the earth was without form. The earth had no form. It was dark. If you read uh, Genesis chapter number one and verse one, I'm just trying to paraphrase. But God said, let there be right and there was right. So if this right can bring order in the midst of chaotic world, if this right can bring order in a world that did not seem uh, to have any form, this right can still bring order in your life and in my life. So it doesn't matter what is bringing the shadow. What you know is that the right, which is on the other side, is able to give us hope. So whatever situation that you might be going through, whatever uh, you might be believing God uh, for, as long as this light is with us, God is going to show himself up. So believing in this power, just as Isaac did when there was a shadow of a famine, where there did not appear to be any provision within his household, God, through his right, the light of the world, provided unto him. He sowed and he leaped had it forward. He continued to increase even in the midst of a famine until the Philistines could not stand him. 
until the Philistines could not start him. And we see, when they started envying him, when they started envying him, if you read in verse, um, in verse uh, 17, they told him to go away from us, uh, from verse 16. And Abimelech said to Isaac, go away from us. You are much mightier than we. So Isaac de uh, departed from there and encamped in the valley of Jera and settled there. So when they started envying him, he realized, you know, I cannot stay with these people. Now, the, the third thing that we learned from there, as soon as he left uh, the, the land of the Philistines, Settled in the valley of Jera. The third thing that Isaac did, he relied on the provision of God. He relied on the provision of God. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. In verse 18, remember, remember he is, he's, 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 he's got livestock. He's got servants. And so he, it's, it's in the midst of a famine. So he needs water. He needs water to provide to his uh, livestock. He needs water for his servant and, uh, and all the people around him. Now see what happens. And I, in verse 18, the Bible says, And Isaac dug again the wells of water that had been dug in the days of Abraham, his father, which the Philistines had stopped after the death of Abraham. So what does that demonstrate? Then that thing that we learn here is that Isaac relied on the provision of God. He relied on the provision of God. And the first thing that he did, he knew his father was a, father, uh, was, was, was a man of faith. And so if God had actually provided to his father Abraham, so the first thing that he does, he goes to the same place, the same point where his father, Father had been provided. So he relied on the provision of God. He relied on the provision of God. And this was a great expression. It, this was a great uh, expression of, 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 of faith, of showing that indeed, no matter what happens, if I need water for these uh, people, if I need water for all these livestock, the only way this is going to be manifested is for me, indeed, to rely on the provision of God. And I just want to tell somebody that it is not just enough to rely on the promises. It is not just enough to rely on the power. It is also important to rely on the provision of God. You know, it was not easy for him. You know, it is not going uh, to be easy to dig the wells that his father ha had dug. You know, the Bible says that indeed they had been stopped after the death of his father. Now, let's see what happens. Let's see uh, what happens. In verse number 20, in verse number 19, rather, verse number 19, when Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found there a well of spring water, the husband of Jerah quarreled with Isaac's husband, saying, The water is ours. So he called the name of the well Isaac because they contented with him. Do you know that there are some people, there are some people who will never find value in something until that moment you add value to it. Until that moment you add value to it. See what happens that as soon as, as soon as they get the water, the herdsmen of Jera, the Philistines, they started quarreling him. And what does he do? He names the well Isaac. Now, he may have named the wells the same names that his father may have given them. But also, he named them based on his current circumstances. In the current circumstances. Because Isaac means contention. Because they were jealous. There are people who will always be jealous. As soon as you make a progress, and it's good to understand this. It is good to understand this. That they will never find value in something until it lands in your hands. Until you yourself, you add value to it. And that is why it is important. It is, all, it is very, 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 very important as believers to know. 
How do I move from here? Am I going to stop here? But as we are going to see, as we are going to see, if we are relying on the provision of God, no form of jealousy, no form of contention, as we learn from Isaac life, should not stop us. Should not stop us. So, what is it that you are doing? What is it that you are doing when you face contention, when you face jealousy from people? What is it that you are doing that is ensuring that indeed you are on the light track to the promises of God? And the question is, are you going to stop there? Are you going to stop there? Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens with, uh, with Isaac in verse number 21. The Bible says that they did not stop there. They dug another well and they quarreled over that also. So he called it the name Sitna. He called it the name Sitna. Sitna means quarrel or opposition. Just when he thought that, you know, jealousy was enough, he faces opposition. He faces a quarrelsome situation. You know, and it can get very, very, very frustrating. It can get very, very frustrating. It wasn't easy uh, to dig a well. I would imagine they, they never had diggers. They never had excavators. So it will probably have taken weeks, if not months, uh, to dig one well. And just when they had found the water, the herdsmen of Jera comes and quarrels them. They bring opposition. They bring uh, frustration. And I know that there is somebody who might be watching here who may have been going through a similar situation when everything that you have been touching, every time that people see you making progress, they start quarreling you. And you know what? A thief does not break into an empty house. There must have been something in you that is greater than what you can see. And until we get into that realization to know that, indeed, in this life, the enemy will always try to fight us. And if we stop at our point of contention, if we stop at our point of quarrel, we are going to miss that which is even far much greater in the kingdom of God. Just as Isaac did, he never stopped at his point of contention. He never stopped at his point of quarrel. So what did he do? What did he do? See Genesis chapter number 26 and verse 22. The Bible records, and he moved from there and he dug another well. And they did not quarrel over it. So he called his name Lehoboth, saying, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. You see, now, the third well was named Lumness. It was, it was named Lumness because it was far enough not to be a problem. Remember, as we have said, supposing he stopped at his point of contention, supposing he stopped at his point of quarrel, he would not have gotten to this point of Rehoboth. And we have see, as we have seen, it was far much to be, it was far enough not to be a problem. It was to be a blessing. It was to be a blessing. And let me tell you one thing. Isaac could easily, remember this is the land as we saw from the beginning. The land. And if it was the land, it means that it belonged to him as the son of the promise. So he had every light to fight for it. He did not do that. But he saw the wells as a blessing. He saw the wells as a blessing from God, not as a result of his hard work. Not as a result of his hard work. And so I don't know. I don't know who, um, who, who, who amongst us may be looking at our lives and we are trying to think, what 
is it that I'm looking forward to? You know, we, we all have dreams, we all have aspirations. And as I have said, a lot of time when we lay our hearts into something, there will always be that element of frustration coming our way. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope. Hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured in our hearts through the Holy Spirit unto who have given us. So everything that happens in our eyes, as long as we continue to commit ourselves to God, it builds us, it makes us ready for it makes us ready for the next stage of our lives. And so I just wanted to thank God that indeed through his word and through the work of Isaac, he has continued to show us how we are able to go through disappointments, how we are, are able to go through challenges by not just looking at our current circumstances, but looking and to our faith, you know, the end product of our faith. Because in God, as long as we continue committing, us, uh, committing ourselves unto him through faith, there is that expected end. There is that expected end. So um, as we come to, end, um, to the end of our broadcast today, I just want to encourage somebody that indeed do not stop at your point of contention. Uh, do not stop uh, at your point of opposition. Remember that there is a rehoboth when God is going to create more room for you. And uh, we will continue from there, uh, the second part of, the, of this broadcast, and then we'll see uh, what happens when God has created room for us. How is he going to guide us into the next level? How are we going uh, to minister even to the people around us through our charities, through our disappointments? How does it align to the promises and the redemptive agenda of God? So thank you so much, wherever you are. Um, we uh, once again uh, so happy that you joined, you, joined us, you joined us today. And if you are there and you've got a need, continue um, writing to us. Uh, if you've got a prayer request, please. Uh, just um, continue uh, writing to us, and indeed, uh, we'll get back to you. And those who doesn't know Lord, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ is our, uh, their Savior, remember it starts from there. It starts from there. You need to start by coming to him, accepting him as your Savior. And as you do so, God will continue uh, to show himself up, look for a good Bible-based church, uh, continue learning uh, about him because this word, as we have seen, was written for us to learn. And as we draw from its lessons, God is going to manifest himself in us. So thank you so much. Uh, may God bless you and have a wonderful rest of the week. Amen. <laughs>